Hey everybody, welcome to part 11 in our series on transferring data from Access to Excel. In part 11, we're still discussing graphing, and specifically today I want to get into VBA for formatting the axes on our graphs. Let's head over to our code window. I have a ton of code over here already that we've used in previous videos in this series that produces a graph, and we're going to add to it down here under the additional formatting comment. Let's take a quick look at what we're starting with and discuss what we're going to do. So we have a, a graph here, a clustered bar chart with two data series. Uh, data series one is gross sales, data series two is gross margin. We have uh, axes that have no titles. We're going to add titles today. We're going to format the titles. We also have, uh, we're, we're allowing Excel to automatically scale our, uh, our y-axis. And Actually, uh, it looks fine the way it is, but we are going to show how we can modify that scale. And we're going to discuss um, the grid lines as well. So I'm going to close this example here. Get back over to our code window. So the first thing I want to do is add a title to our x-axis. And like a lot of the other titles that we've already discussed in previous videos, we have to tell Excel that we have one first before we can do anything, before it'll be visible, before we can do anything to it. We're going to use the axes collection. That is uh, plural for axis. Okay, and we're going to give it a constant of Excel category. That tells Excel that we're going to, we want to work with our x-axis right now. Using the has title property and setting it to true. Next, I want to tell it the, the actual uh, name or actual word I want on the x-axis. Okay, so again, the same axis Excel, Excel category. Dot access, access title. And this one takes a dot caption. Some take a dot text, this one takes a dot caption. And I want to give it the word divisions, because on our x-axis of the graph are divisions of our fictional company that we're graphing data for. Let's take a quick look at how that, where that, what that gets us. So we've got a little word divisions down there at the bottom. I want to make that a little bit bigger and take control of the, of the font that we're in. So we will type it in. Again, same axis Excel category, same access title. Here, font name, give it a string. I'm giving it Calibri. Font.size, I'm giving it 12, and font.font .font style. Normal at first. I'm going to change it to bold in just a second. You see, uh, so we got a little bit bigger word there for divisions. Now let's change that word to bold. Font style to bold. Like that. There we go. Now, I'm going to type, I'm going to copy in the same thing for our y-axis. Now for the, the y-axis, tell it what we're dealing with the y-axis. We have the same, we use the same axis collection, but we're going to give it the value of XL value. Alright, again, X has title equals true. Caption, I'm going to just say US dollars just to be specific what type of dollars it are. Uh, same font, Calibri, 12, and forgot to clone in. Bold. There we go. Save, run. All right, so we've got the word divisions down here underneath, centered under our axis, under our graph, and then US dollars along the left side. So next, we're going to talk about grid lines. These grid lines that we can see right here, these are major grid lines, okay? And major being that they line up with a number that's displayed on the x axis, okay? We can do things to the, the grid lines, we can change their color. We can change the line style. I'm not going to do that, but um, you can go to the, the object browser and access and have a look at the various things that are in there for axes. So here's the axes collection and the axis. Axes is a collection of axis items. Okay, and then you can see down here lots of things we can do. Has major grid lines, has minor grid lines. Major grid lines. Uh, to go into those and there's going to be color options and, and line options and whatnot. I'm going to close this. I want to put, I want to show, I'm going to add minor grid lines. Okay. Um, I think it makes the graph look way more busy than it needs to, but if you've got uh, a need for that, you can use those. I'm going to, I don't have a need for it. I'm going to get rid of it. Now something I have, uh, let me pull this graph back up here. Now something that's bothering me, see how, how uh, they're 50,000, 100,000, 150,000, they're very long, and I played with putting labels on each series. 
and especially on this uh, second series here, the numbers were overlapping the bar next to them. And uh, you know, my thought was if I could shorten these labels here on the left, they might have a better, better chance of labeling these bars and not overlapping quite as much. So there is a way to do that. Close, go. And that is working with the display unit <coughs> property. Now it takes, there are a lot of uh, uh, constants that we can use here. Uh, let's see if we can find those over here. Um, display unit, display unit. There we go. Click on that. See here, you get hundred millions, hundreds, millions, ten millions, thousands. I'm using. I'm going to use thousands. We'll see what that does to us. It shortened our labels, but look at what it did do, though. Because my source data has decimals. See what it's done is all it's done is division. It's still giving me these decimals to the right. So if if you don't want these decimals visible, then you're going to need to format your source data so there are no decimals. That also would shorten it quite a bit. All right, one more thing. Right now we have, uh, we're letting Excel scale this graph. In other words, we're letting Excel decide what is on the x-axis and what is the top number. And it's doing it based on the data we're showing it. And, and, I, and I think in this case it's doing a very good job. But you can change that. And we'll use, let me comment that out. So we can Get bigger numbers in there again. You can tell it the minimum scale, meaning the lowest number you want to see on the graph. You can tell it maximum scale, the highest number you want to see on the graph. And you go to 20,000, the lowest, and then 250 was the highest. You can also affect how many tick marks are in between by telling it. In this case, we're talking about the major grid lines. Okay, so this is the we'll use the major unit instead of twenty-five thousand. That will give us a lot more lines. In other words, it'll it's going to give us a tick mark every twenty-five thousand dollars. So if you wanted to set the scale dynamically using code, you would need to test your the lowest value you're going to show on the graph and the highest value you're going to show on the graph, and set your your min and your max. And then you know maybe do some sort of division to come up with what your major units would be, or we just let Excel do it. I think Excel is doing a very good job by itself. Um, I would probably leave that alone, but yeah, I, I, I can see how uh, in certain situations you would want to to take control over that. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. And as usual, I'll put a link to the code listing in the description below the video. And we will see you next time.